Well, first of all, I think thinking about futures of modernity, we have to realize that we are stuck, that we are surrounded by all kinds of traps. I think we do have a consensus now that we live in an entangled world. The unknown, the alien, the foreign is no more there far away at the edge of the empire. The other is here in our midst. But what if we try to look at the journey into modernity from the point of view of the outsiders, those left out of the process, the, the excluded, we might even say the victims, or we might even say the losers. This is the problem of cosmopolitanism. You don't feel the pain of others, you only feel your own pain, but you have the imagination to know what that kind of pain might be for others through their words and thoughts. The theory of, risk, uh, of reflexive modernization based on the concept of risk society is in my understanding still very much a theory of Western modernity. Some would even say of, a West, of West German society and critics uh, sometimes even said of the Schwabing and Steinberg Say society. The concept of cosmopolitanism is in fact crucial. We actually need to reinvent it by reformulating some of its basic premises. For example, by giving up its universalistic premises and by taking the plurality of different modernities and their, uh, their conflicting nature uh, more, more serious. Um, I think this is a challenge. Ulrich is still quite young. In the coming years, he has plenty of time, so I'm quite optimistic that he will accomplish uh, this task. The provocation I got from reading Europe papers and, and books is to realize, first of all, that the West is not the mover anymore. Is the new situation we're talking about, are the drives towards cosmopolitan modernity, are they not imminently laden with the possibility of conflict and friction. So the link between movement, civil societies, parties on the one hand, and established institutions on the other hand, I think is crucial if we want to, uh, to get a proper understanding of the idea of cosmopolitanization from below. And the cosmopolitanization is something which happens by force. The other is in our myth, as you say. This is something which is a fundamental threat to many people. And then there's a final point I wanted to make, which does relate directly to the issue of activism and civil society. Poverty is not an abstract state. It's not people who are poor are not passive recipients of poverty. They're people who day after day after day face obstacles in their daily life. They're often tremendously innovative, but their innovative ideas for changing their lives fail over and over again. Non-knowledge is a creative field, a third term. It is about creating new potentials, creating new epistemic spaces. The social sciences have to open up. They have to have a different vision. They have to include post-post-colonial, the whole interconnectedness. <laughs>